Being here sometimes feels unreal. I live in this beautiful, complicated community. I've got wonderful friends. Shout out to HLS. <laughs> Kind-hearted professors have taught me so much more than just the law. And when I think about the dinner parties, the slices of Joe's pizza at midnight, woo, the kisses, the encounters with wild turkeys on my way to class and wild rabbits on my way home, I am grateful because Harvard has, in many ways, been my refuge. But not so much this year. Being on campus this year, I've been reminded of just how exposed we are. Anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, anti-Arab bias, doxing, death threats, losing jobs, losing a president, losing friends, losing our right to free speech. I had bought into the myth that that kind of stuff wasn't supposed to happen here. I thought that in our little bubble, we would be safe. I thought that Harvard was a shield and that all the things that we are, well-educated, hardworking, successful, even beautiful, <laughs> would protect us from the problems of the world. But I was wrong. Now, our choice is to either be upset about our vulnerability or to use that as a basis for connecting with others. And that choice will manifest in pivotal moments when people will look to us for guidance. For better or for worse, we will be decision makers and we will have discretion. Over and over, we will bear responsibility for making decisions that will change other people's lives. Think about just some of the people whose lives we may help shape. Women dealing with the fallout of having their reproductive rights stripped. <laughs> Immigrants fleeing places where there are no universities left from which to graduate. Trans and queer people forced to hide who they are. <laughs> Climate refugees escaping homes that have become uninhabitable. One of the one in three black boys who can expect to go to jail in his lifetime. <laughs> and citizens whose only mistake was being born poor in a country like America that criminalizes poverty. No matter what jobs we get, in our lives and in our careers, we will encounter these people and others in circumstances they did not choose. And the question is, Will we use what has happened on campus this year to justify building walls around ourselves in a misguided attempt to keep the bad stuff out, to keep the bad people out, to separate ourselves from the rest of the world? Or will we seek out and build relationships with people who do not have our privilege and with whom we disagree? Graduates, you know what we must do. The degrees we're receiving call us to action. Yeah. Your degree, it's, it's like a note from mom to take the chicken out of the freezer. 
And if that sounds inconsequential or unimportant to you, you must not have a mom like mine. <laughs> because let me tell you, as wonderful and kind-hearted as she is, when I was growing up, if I didn't take that chicken out, we had a problem. <laughs> Love you, mom. <laughs> it's the same thing with these degrees. If we don't use our Harvard education and the power that comes with it to be in solidarity with others, it will be a problem. And not only will we disappoint our families, but we will fail to fulfill our obligation to use this education to make the world more just and more compassionate. When I think about how I want us to use our educations after we graduate, a line from Steinbeck's East of Eden comes to mind. Now that you don't have to be perfect, you can be good. But I say, we must be good. And that might be different than what we're used to. Striving to be perfect, that's what got us to Harvard and what got us to this day. We are here in part because we have learned how to work incredibly hard and because we know what it takes to be successful. But there's a difference between working hard and doing good. And there's a difference between being successful and being good. Now, oh, thanks. Being good can take many forms. Standing up to dictators, being mentors, using your Harvard connections to help people who didn't go here, voting, not being silent or neutral or apathetic in the face of injustice. And to that end, speaking out against the fact that America has 5% of the world's population, but incarcerates 20% of the world's prisoners. And demanding a ceasefire in Gaza. Now, there are many different ways to be good, and as we strive to be good, we will not always agree. There's complexity in what it means to make the world a better place. But I would be remiss to not say that it's not very good to announce the day before commencement that 13 seniors will not graduate. But let me offer something universal. Being good means tapping into your own sense of vulnerability and using it to pay attention, to connect with others. No ego, no moral superiority. It means seeing yourself in other people's struggles, even if they're different from yours. And it means that when you catch yourself judging someone for their circumstances or choices, you force yourself to think again.
The times that we are in call for us to no longer seek refuge in ivory towers and in gated communities. To Today, and each day moving forward, we must do more than just work hard, more than just be successful, more than just be perfectionists. We must make the affirmative choice to be good, because not being good would be a waste of the privilege of having graduated from this beautiful and complicated place, Harvard. Godspeed, congratulations, and go do good.